Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I will be covering Packet Monitor, PKT Mon, which is a network diagnostic tool for Windows. It can be used for packet capture, packet drop detection, packet filtering, and counting. It's a powerful command line tool that allows you to track network activity and diagnose network issues. So if you're running an updated Windows 10 or 11 or a recent version of Windows Server, then it's already on your computer. I'm using Windows 11 here, and to get started, open up Command Prompt or PowerShell as an administrator. So the command to run Packet Monitor is PKT Mon, and you type it in and you get D below the commands, filter, list, start, stop, status, unload, counters, reset, ETL to tax, ETL to PCAP, hex to PCAP, and help. You can always type help after for more information. Now, first we need to set up a filter, and this will tell us what we want to look for. If you don't set one up, it will catch for everything that is received and transmitted by your computer, and it's going to be overwhelming. So when you're troubleshooting, you want to narrow down what you're looking for. So to do that, I'm going to set up the filter. So we go to Packetmon Filter and type in Help, and it gives the commands Add, List, Remove, and Help, and we can type in Packet mon filter and then list and you can see there's no filters and we do a packet mon filter and then we can do add and we can do a help after and at the top here we can see the packet mon filter add and then all the switches that we can put here and then this is what it can match ethernet frame mac address vlan data link layer and then we got the IP header that we can match, DSCP, and then the transport layer, and then we can do the IP address, TCP UDP header, cluster heartbeat, encapsulation, and then it gives three examples here, or a ping filter, TCP SYN filter, subnet filter. So if I want to do a ping filter, I can use this as an example. So I'm going to set up a ping filter. Call it ping filter. And then my address so the address of my computer is 192.168.2.112 and then the protocol is going to be ICMP so dash T ICMP and what we have here the transport protocol I'm going to hit enter and then we can check the filter has been added And we can see here that the filter is added, ping filter, ICMP, and here's the IP address. Now the next thing is the components. And this is where it can be very granular. When a packet comes into the computer, it goes into the network card, gets processed, and moves up the OSI model. And when it hits the upper layers, we can see the different Windows components that it hits and what is happening. So to see the different components, so to see the different components, we can type in packetmon list and then we'll get the components here so here is my network adapter and if, for example if you have a usb ethernet adapter a bluetooth adapter vpn adapters they will all show up here but for me i just have my gigabit network connection here and if we type in packetmon list help Let's say to type in dash A and it'll show all component types. Only network adapters are shown by default, include hidden, and then dash dash JSON or JSON format. And so if I do packetmon list dash A, and we can see here that there's more information. We got my NIC, and then there's the filter drivers, there's the ID numbers. And then we got the different protocols here, TCP IP, we got here MS LLDP, and down here we got application protocols, and we got HTTP.SYS, and so on. And then if we do packetmon list I, which is, see here, include hidden. So this will show network adapters that are hidden. 
IPv6, IKv2, network monitor, SSTP, and so on and so on. And if we do packet list dash I and dash A, it's going to be very verbose. And it's going to list everything here. So I'm just going to clear the screen. So when you start a packet monitor, it will capture on all components. And that can be a lot. So we can specify it to narrow it down to a specific component. And when you're troubleshooting, you would want to do it for all to see what is happening. But to start, I'm just going to do just my network card. And then after, I'll do it for all components. So I do a packet mon list. And then here's my network adapter. And it has an ID of 9. So I'm going to remember that. And to start my packet mon capture, you can do packet mon start and then help. So here we see packet capture dash C, enable packet capture and packet counters, and then dash dash comp. So you can select specific components. And this will be my NIC. And then we can do the packet size as the default is 120 bytes. So we can change that. And it has different flags that you can check on. There's event providers. So if there's a specific events from a provider that you want to look for, you can put that in here. And there's uh, logging parameters. If you want to log it to a file. And then the log file name, the default is pktmon.etl. And then you can specify the file size. And then the logging mode. And I'm going to be doing real time. So then it'll display the events as they come onto the screen here. And then it gives some examples down here of how to do it. So it'll be packet mon start and then dash C. And then the comp, the component is going to be nine, which is my NIC. And then I want the packet size. It's going to be zero, so it's going to capture the entire packet. And then dash M, I want it in real time. So M is the log mode, and then it's going to be in real time. And then hit enter. And then we can see here the collected data, the packet counters, the packet capture, capture type all packets, monitored components. So that's going to be my NIC. And then here's the packet filter that was created earlier. It's going to monitor for ICMP address 192.168.2.112. So now I'm going to go on to my Linux machine over here. And then I am going to ping my Windows 11 machine. I'm going to ping it once. Ping 192.168.2.112 dash C. And I'm going to ping just once. I'm going to hit enter. All right. And we can see the ping come in here. And we can see the first packets coming in. And it has the packet group ID is 4, and then packet number is 1, appearance 1, direction is Rx, received, type is Ethernet, component 9, which is our NIC, edge 1, filter 1, original size, and it gives the MAC address of who sent it, and then my MAC address for this Windows 11 machine here, and it has the IP address, so it's pinging from 192.168.2.113 going to 192.168.2.112, and then it's ICMP echo request here. And then we can see here the next packet is packet group ID 5, so it'll increment by 1. Packet number 1, appearance 1, this direction now is transmit, so it's now it's being sent by my computer, going back, and it's leaving component 9, which is my NIC, edge 1, filter 1, and then original size and logged size. And we can see here the MAC addresses, and then it's sending back an ICMP echo reply. So we can see here the packet group ID is 4, and then the next one is packet group ID 5, so it incremented by 1. So we can see here that it's a new packet. And the appearance number here, it says it's 1, and that means that this is the snapshot for it. As it moves through the different components, you'll see the appearance number will increment. So to stop the capture, you just hit Control C. Now this was just doing it for one component, which was the NIC component number nine. So I'm going to run the capture again, and then I am going to remove the comp nine. So I have it running now, and the difference now is the monitor components, it's all. And now I'm going to do the ping again, and I'm just going to ping once. 
Okay. And there's quite a bit of information here. Let me expand the window. And I'm going to stop the capture. Okay. And then so we can see the packet group ID 6, packet number 1, and then appearance 1, direction received, type Ethernet component 9, which is the NIC, edge 1, filter 1, etc. And then now we're going to the next snapshot of it, packet group ID 6. And then we'll see here the appearance is 2. So now it's moving up through the components. And then now here is component number 18, edge 2, filter 1. So what is component number 18? Well, I'm just going to open up a new command prompt. And we can do a packetmon list dash A. And so we can see here that 18 is the wfplwfs.sys, which is the WFP native filter for Windows. So it's the Windows filtering. And we can see here it's there's edge two and filter one that it goes through. See here the same source and, and destination MAC addresses. And then here we got the third snapshot of this packet. So appearance number three here. And then it's component number 18 and now edge is one. So what is this edge? Edge two and edge one. Well, if there's a filter, like in this case, there's going to be two edges. So because there's going to be one at the upper and lower edge. So in this case, the WFP native filter has an upper and lower edge. Going back, and we can see here the fourth appearance, direction received. And then there's component number 40 that it goes through. So what is number 40? It's, you look at here, it's the tcpip.sys. It's the protocol, and this is the driver that it goes through. And then the next one we see here is packet group ID is number seven. So it incremented by one. So this is a new packet, and this is the first appearance of it. And this time it's being transmitted. And it's coming out of the component number 40, so from the tcpip.sys protocol here. And edge one filters one. And then the next appearance for this is going to be component number 18, and it's edge number one. And then the next appearance for this, appearance number three, component 18, edge number two that we see here. So it's gone through the WFP native filter. And then finally, the appearance number four for this packet, component number nine, which is the NIC. So it is now leaving the NIC. And so that is how I got ICMP echo reply here. So that's an example of how PacketMon can help you when troubleshooting an issue. You can see the different components that it goes through and see if there's any issues. And now let's say that ping is not working. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on the Windows firewall. Clear the screen. And I'm going to do the filter again. And I'm going to do one packet. So we can take a look here at the capture. And then it's same as before, direction received, component number nine. And it goes to component 18. And then component 18 again, edge two, then edge one, component now 40. And then we see here a new one. See here, component number 44, filter one, drop reason, ICMP inspection drop, drop location. So it's getting dropped, as we can see here. And then dropping IP and then ICMP echo request. And then there's a duplicate drop. And then it says drop reason, INET transfer endpoint was not found. And then the last appearance for here is drop region inspection drop. And so there's seven appearances here. And so what is component number 44? So if we take a look here, there's no component number 44. And if we do a dash A dash I, and we use a finder for 44, it doesn't come up, but it is there. So what you can do is you can use 
select string using PowerShell. So I'm going to open up PowerShell. Packet mon list JSON select string. Look for 44. And then context 3 and 3. So the 3 and 3, it's going to look for 3 lines above and 3 lines after for my query here, colon 44. Okay, and we can see here that it's related to the driver tcpip.sys. So it's the secondary ID for it. So it's related to that driver. So going back to the capture here, and then we see here that there's an inspection drop. So you know that there's a program or a service that's dropping this traffic, and then you would want to take a look into that. And then in this case, it's the Windows firewall. There's also as well as the Packetmon counters that will show you the different components, the direction and the packets, and then a number of bytes that's also useful for troubleshooting. You can do Packetmon counters and then help. We'll do a Packetmon counters. And it'll show here. So it's one packet has been received by my network card and then the WFP native filter, and then there's the lower edge and the upper edge, 101. And then we can see our TCP IP, there's a drop that has been received, one. And we can see it here, and nothing's been transmitted out. So we can see all zeros here. As you can see, Packet Monitor is a very valuable tool for diagnosing network issues. There's a lot of information you can gather. I hope this was useful, and I thank you for watching. Bye now.